Oh, man, it's early. 5.30 a.m. Anyway, I'm off to Guelph now to uh, get my first um, major keynote, I guess. Let's see how it goes. Good morning, kitty. Time for a balanced breakfast with Katie. Shares his mechanical and creative inventions on his website, thehacksmith.ca. James is going to take uh, some time from a very busy schedule uh, to speak with us this morning about his interesting career path, how he came to be a young entrepreneur, and his innovative plans for the future. Please join me in welcoming James Hobson. Anyone can innovate. You just have to start somewhere. It doesn't matter how small. 
I've never heard anyone say they wasted their life innovating and wish they'd watched more TV. <laughs> the point is, find your passion and just do it. Well, I hear a lot of, I can't reinvent the wheel, and for the most part, you're right, but you can innovate the wheel. Here's an expanding wheel. Here's a wheel with no air. Here's a wheel of paddles for marine applications. The list goes on. We live in a day and age where so much technology already exists, many of the basic elements of technology have already been invented. But that's not what you're trying to invent. Never before has the human race had so much access to knowledge, ideas, and designs as we do now thanks to the internet, which means we're all in the right place to innovate. And that also means you don't have to be backed by a multi-million dollar company in order to do it. Let's watch a quick clip about my exoskeleton. So these are some designs of the uh, next rev, which uh, I'm basing loosely off of the movie Edge of Tomorrow. So, pretty cool, right? Yeah. I'll be the first one. Pretty cool, right? Yeah. I'll, just be, I'll be the first to tell you that this exoskeleton I made is nothing special. Seriously. It's made from components and technology that has existed for over 50 years. Many better prototypes exist, but for whatever reason, it caught people's attention. A lot of people's attention. I even ended up on the Daily Planet, where I lifted almost twice as much weight—a 275-pound barbell. Well, you have a fine Mr. Jane from here, of course, right? And so, how much more do you think you can actually lift? Uh, I think we can do 275. 275. So, Jane, come on in. I need your help because I can barely lift anything here. So, why don't you guys add? So just for reference, 275 is pretty much one of the world records for barbell curl. <laughs> No, 
early, it's something I threw together in my, my garage. But that's what makes it special. I'm bridging that gap where people think, I can't do that, only big companies can do that. And proving it is possible. The amount of kids on YouTube who have told me that I've inspired them to become engineers is amazing. Asking what school I went to, it seems to be working. I guess the point I'm trying to make is you don't have to invent the next big thing to make a splash. You just have to take something and repurpose it. It's not about reinventing the wheel. It's about slapping some new things on the wheel and seeing if it works any better. The frustrating part is you can't expect to succeed with your first try, or even your second. It's important to be confident in yourself, while at the same time it's also important to be realistic and to entertain the idea of failure. <laughs> Confidence is great. It helps you take bigger risks, step outside your comfort zone, and generally achieve more. But confidence is a double-edged sword. Overconfidence is one of the most common reasons for failure. I learned this the hard way about eight years ago. I co-led my high school's robotics team for Skills Canada. It was the first year we competed. We built a soccer-playing robot that would have to face off against two other robots per match. We won the regional competition, the provincial competition, and we absolutely demolished at the national. The following year, we competed again. We built an even better robot with the knowledge we gained from our first competitions. It was a tank. No, seriously. It was literally a tank. <laughs> we won the regional competition and then provincial. But sorry. We won the regional competition and then went on to provincials. Our robot was easily one of the most capable robots at the competition. But at the end of the day, we didn't practice as much as we should have. It is remote controlled after all. We were eliminating one of the final matches due to human error on our part. It didn't matter how good our robot was, we didn't practice everything together. Were we arrogant? Possibly. At the time, it sucked. But I learned firsthand the dangers of arrogance and overconfidence. It's okay to be confident, but make sure that confidence is rooted in both yourself and your environment, not in just the things that you control. There's always the unknown. That's another thing about the failure. Before considering any opportunity, consider the worst case outcome. Does anyone here remember Prison Break? There's a great show about a structural engineer. Okay. Okay. There's a great show about a structural engineer who gets himself incarcerated to prison just to save his innocent brother who's on death row. He planned out the whole escape beforehand, complete with contingency plans for absolutely every possibility. You have your main plan, which you hope succeeds. It's a preferable one. But then you have your fallback plan. Plan A fails, plan B takes over. And don't worry if that one fails too, you have another 25 letters to go. <laughs> what most people don't realize is it's important to treat both your education and career plan with contingency plans. Doing this creates immense confidence in yourself. It reduces the risk and in turn encourages you to take bigger risks, which can lead to bigger rewards. Failure is just another hard lesson, but it's one that will stick with you for life. But trust me, if you plan for it, it won't be nearly as bad. Overconfidence and contingency planning aside, I guess the real question is how can you, as local business leaders and educators, help promote innovation and support the next generation of thinkers? Has anyone seen this video clip in the news recently? Yep. You guys are reading the wrong news sites. <laughs> so there's this big movement of makers in the US that make prosthetics for children using 3D printers. How awesome is that? Sometimes they make prosthetics superhero themed. When Robert Downey Jr.'s people heard about an Iron Man themed prosthetic for a seven year old boy named Alex, they orchestrated Tony Stark himself to give Alex his new arm. Talk about inspiring. Now, obviously, we can't all be Robert Downey Jr. and inspire people just by acting like a fictional character. And of course, taking some credit for uh, some engineer's work behind the scenes. <laughs> but we can help promote innovation through education which is why I'd like to talk to you a bit about the company that I work for and why I think they're doing just that. Have you ever heard of Chris Digital? Yeah. No? It's actually one of the biggest companies in Kitchener. And it's a world leader in digital projection and display technology. All engineering and manufacturing is done right here in Kitchener with around 800 employees. It's where Electro Home used to be. In fact, Christy bought Electro Home in the 90s, if you remember that company. It was one of Kitchener's forefront manufacturing companies. Galaxy Cinema uses Christie Digital exclusively. Many of the universities and colleges do. Theme parks do. There are training facilities. 
and even outdoor venues as well. Are there any Star Trek buffs in the audience? <laughs> we make something called the cave. You might be a bit more familiar with the holodeck. Yeah, we make that. We even do projection mapping where we can turn almost any surface into a projection surface. So that's a car, and that the paint you see on that, that's all projected on the car. But enough talking about it. How would I show you a little clip from some of our coolest tech? I'm actually going to 
imagine you're working with someone in BC who has muscular atrophy, and we're working on a kind of exoskeleton neck upgrade for his wheelchair. Just allow him to look around, because he doesn't have the physical ability to do that. And I'm happy to announce, I just mortgaged my very first garage. <laughs> well, I mean house. Well, I, I bought it for the garage. So if you're interested in seeing future exoskeleton development and seeing the transformation of the slightly run-down building into what I hope will become a world-class engineering facility in my very own backyard, I'm thinking it'll be a cross between Tony Stark's basement and the back video. <laughs> <laughs> I've already started designing it, as you can see. Um, then please follow me on YouTube for updates. There's a link to my website at www.thehacksmith.ca. So to recap, <coughs> don't be afraid to innovate. You can do it. Have confidence in yourself but be prepared for a few surprises along the way. I hope, I've realized, I've, I hope I've helped you realize that it doesn't matter what your passion is, as long as you're doing it. Just as I hope my creativity has inspired you, allow your creativity and en energy to inspire and educate others, and we'll have a world full of innovators. I would like to leave you with a quote by T.E. Lawrence, which I believe very strongly. All men dream, but not equally. Those who dream by night in the dusty recesses of their mind, wake in the day to find that it was only vanity, but the dreamers of the day are dangerous men, for they may act on their dreams with open eyes to make them possible. Don't be afraid to dream big. Relish in your daydreams and fantasies of the future. If you truly believe in the dream and yourself, you might just find the universe will bend to your will and make it happen. Thank you for your time and attention. Good job. And I'm sure that Good we job. all learned a lot from your invention. So I have a small um, token of appreciation. Perfect. I think that went quite well. Still room for improvement, though. Thanks for watching.